Welcome to this video presentation brought to you by Your Legal Partners, a corporate law firm based in Greece. I'm Katerina Christodoulou, partner at the firm, and I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Fotini Mavrikaki, also a partner at Your Legal Partners. In response to the evolving market demands during the recent years of Greek crisis, Your Legal Partners has established a dedicated team that specializes in distressed M&As. This team comprises legal experts from various practice areas within the firm, corporate and M&A, insolvency and litigation, pulling the knowledge to address the particularities of such M&As. During our presentation, we'll give you an overview of the opportunities that emerged through recent reforms in Greek legal framework for investors interested in Greek distressed assets. assets. Let us begin with some insights of the Greek market. Greece has successfully rebounded from the debt crisis and the pandemic. It now benefits from low debt servicing debt and the highly anticipated return to investment grade, whilst the government has implemented reforms which aim to attract investment. However, increase of the interest rates and inflation, coupled with the energy and climate crisis, as well as the uncertainty of the global politics, are expected to give rise to an increase of supply of distressed assets. On the demand side, same factors will be the main drivers that will push industrial and financial players to consider more investment opportunities for distressed companies in Greece. The industries that are under stress in Greece due to pandemic and energy crisis include hospitality and leisure, construction, retail, transport, and industry that suffers from the high energy prices, such as steel companies. But what do we mean by distressed M&A? Distressed M&As differ considerably from non-distressed or traditional M&As, as we are referring to the acquisition of assets, shares or businesses where the seller, or indeed the target company itself, is in financial distress. At one end of the spectrum, the company concerned may have some breathing space and be in early discussions with its lenders. And towards the other end of the spectrum, the company could be in negotiations concerning its restructuring process. The main characteristics of a distressed M&A are compressed timetable, limited information to a buyer, and increased need for protection for the buyers. Such sales are usually lender land. Now, I will hand over the floor to Fotini to elaborate on the structuring of an M&A transaction. Thank you, Katerina. The structure broadly depends on the status of the financial stress the target company faces. Some companies that have enough breathing space, mainly, mainly companies with export activity, companies from the aquaculture industry or the food industry, usually proceed with an informal and out-of-court restructuring based on a business recovery scheme mutually agreed with the lenders, that is, the banks. Under this recovery scheme, the banks become involved or take over the debtor's management and look for a potential investor. A share deal typically follows and the investor enters the company by way of acquisition of new shares by contributing fresh capital. Another option for achieving an asset deal is in the context of the acquisition of non-performing bank loans together with the underlying collateral. In Greece, the law of 2015 has simplified the transfer of NPLs. Any Greek limited or foreign company legally seated within the European Economic Area is entitled to acquire bank loan receivables as long as its corporate purpose allows it. The servicing of the loan receivables is mandatorily performed by Greek servicing companies specifically designated for these purposes. Further to the acquisition of the NPLs, the investor may initiate enforcement procedures that would lead to the auction of the mortgaged asset. The investor itself may participate in the bidding process, and if it is a preferred bidder, it can even settle the payable auction price against its loan claims. Even though the auction processes are concluded much faster than in the past, the main disadvantage of the auction sales is the judicial remedies granted to the debtor, which may cost time and money. In the case now of companies which are saddled with debt without breathing space, an informal debt restructuring may not suffice to comfort investors' concerns. 
Thus, it is advisable that an investor acquires the assets through a formal and structured pre-insolvency process in order to eliminate the risk of a transaction being challenged by creditors in the scenario of a future bankruptcy. Greek law provides more options for pre-insolvency restructuring, and Katerina will walk us through these options. Well, distressed companies seeking debt restructuring in Greece have access to two processes out-of-court workout and business rehabilitation process. The out-of-court workout is a confidential process based on an electronic platform that permits debtors to ask their creditor, banks and services, as well as state, social security institutions and municipalities for a haircut or this rescheduling of debt repayments. The banks decide on an offer by majority of claims held. 60% of the financial institutions, including at least 40% of secured creditors. There is no requirement for court ratification, so the process can be really speedy with a maximum two months duration. Creditors may decline to make an offer, in which case the process terminates automatically if an offer is not made and accepted by the debtor within a two month period. Investors can acquire the target company after the settlement. In most cases, interest by an investor could be a driver for the settlement. However, what is notable is that the target company in an out-of-court workout would not benefit from write-offs, and the such write-offs are agreed bilaterally by the investor and the creditors, the company would not enjoy tax benefits, and any write-offs could give rise to taxation. By contrast, rehabilitation agreement has been proven in Greek legal practice the most successful tool for distressed M&As. The rehabilitation agreement may provide different structures by way of which an investor, whether being a creditor or not, may acquire assets of the intended target company. In general, dynamics of the rehabilitation agreement are complex since the stakeholders may have different driving forces. Usually the process is creditors-led. Creditors are more concerned to obtain enough to repay the debt, so they're usually risk averse. The investor has more appetite for risk and is interested to get a good discount to compensate the distressed status of the business. Sellers wish to maximize the price, so when the role of the investor coincides with such of a creditor, for example, through acquisition of the receivables from the lenders, the rehabilitation arrangements may include less complex structures such as debt to equity swap. In all cases, the rehabilitation agreement shall be ratified by court upon fulfillment of certain prerequisites, focusing mainly on the status of the debtor, the sustainability of its proposed business plan, and the no worse off treatment of the creditors compared to the recoveries of such creditors in case of insolvency of the debtor. Now, Fotini will lead us through the various structure options within a rehabilitation agreement. Same as in traditional M&As, an acquisition in the context of a rehabilitation agreement may involve either a share deal or an asset deal. A share deal may be realized either through merger with the target company or through the direct acquisition of existing or new shares of the target company or the acquisition of shares of a new company created following a spin-off of a sector or a demerger. The share deal is opted when there is greater confidence in the recoverability of the target's business, when the investor focuses on the target itself, either aiming to consolidate it within its group or even to eliminate competition. In this structure, the investor should be mindful of due diligence. Documentation of the share deal, the share purchase agreement and the shareholders agreement if required, is a lot simpler than in a typical M&A transaction. The seller's representations and warranties are limited and usually the seller loses control over the management of the company. Even where warranties are given, it is doubtful whether the seller will be able to satisfy the liability undertaking thereunder if a claim arises. To address this concern of investors, documentation may provide that warranty claims are satisfied in kind, for example by the transfer of additional target shares. Of course, this applies only in cases where the seller remains a shareholder of the target company. The liabilities are restructured or written off, 
or are satisfied by the funds contributed by the investor or the proceeds from liquidation of individual assets of the distressed company or even its guarantors. Asset deals, on the other hand, are structured as a hive down or a carve out of individual assets to a new company. The typical structure involves the establishment by the investor of a new entity which, which will acquire the individual assets of the distressed company, those assets that are attracting the investor's interest. The purchase price for the transfer of assets may include the assumption by NUCO of certain liabilities of the distressed company, in most cases liabilities related to the preservation of the business, such as liabilities to major suppliers, to employees or to the state. Any payable purchase price is used for the repayment of or restructuring of the liabilities left behind in the distressed company. Also, creditors can participate in the NUCO. If the investor is also the main creditor, it can contribute to NUCO its claims against the distressed company. Thereafter, the purchase price payable by NUCO to the distressed company for the acquisition of the picked assets may be set off against repayment of the liabilities of the latter. In all cases, together with the target asset, the NUCO automatically acquires the major licenses and material contracts of the distressed business mainly those which are necessary for the continuation of the business as ongoing concern. These would be lease and license agreements, long-term supply or sales contracts, franchise agreements, operation licenses, etc. The residual liabilities of the distressed company are restructured, whilst others may be written off. This structure serves a cherry-picking of assets made by the investor and mitigates the risk of the new entity bearing liabilities from any misbehaviors of the past or from any change in the tax treatment of written-off liabilities. Hence, the due diligence exercise here focuses on the particular assets. Both in the shared deal or an asset deal, it is also essential to ensure that the distressed company has access to funding throughout any pre-closing period. For this purpose, investors may be called upon to provide that interim funding. Finally, in both scenarios, acquisition financing may be provided to investors. Katerina, could you provide us with an overview of the benefits associated with this type of transaction? Certainly. Investing in a distressed company through a rehabilitation agreement becomes a compelling choice since the legal framework and proper documentation can tackle many of the considerations of the mind of an investor. The major advantage is the crackdown of non-consenting creditors. Even creditors that do not participate in the rehabilitation agreement shall see their claims written off in a binding and conclusive manner. In addition, creditors with contingent claims or claims not appearing or provisioned in the financial statements including any additional taxes, surcharges, interest and tax penalties not imposed until the ratification of the restructuring can be captured from this ground down to the extent that the cause of the claim has occurred within the time of reference for the rehabilitation proceedings. As a result, investors participating in the rehabilitation process enjoy greater advantages when compared to investors of a typical M&A as they are afforded with enhanced protection towards contingencies of the acquired enterprise, including contingencies stemming from future tax audits. Another benefit is in the realm of tax incentives. All transfer of assets performed in the performance of the agreement are exempted from any tax, duty or levy, while the notarial and registration costs are reduced to 30%, with the sole applicable tax being VAT, contingent upon the age of the transferred property. Furthermore, no donation tax or income tax is payable in relation to gain resulting from the write-off or adjustment of debt. The assets are transferred free of any third-party encumbrances or rights, and the streamlined process minimizes the need of an exhaustive due diligence examination of the target company. The transfers are ring fenced from any risk of revocation that would be applicable under general law in the event of subsequent bankruptcy of the debtor. Lastly, the law offers advantages that ensure the uninterrupted continuation or survival of the business, the preservation and enhancement of its value, and the smooth conclusion and execution of the rehabilitation agreement. 
These include, on the one hand, facilitation of interim financing by granting to interim creditors a super privilege above all other rankings, and on the other hand, the stay of all enforcement measures against the debtor and the prohibition of the debtor to transfer its core assets. These measures are automatically implemented from the filing of the rehabilitation agreement to court or may be ordered by court even at an earlier stage during the negotiation of the agreement. In conclusion, the legal framework and the current momentum in Greece present distinct advantages for investors. Looking ahead, we expect a forthcoming wave of distressed companies in Greece, creating a window of opportunity for financial investors and sovereign wealth funds, as well as trade buyers to enter the market. While risks are inherent to these transactions, a knowledgeable advisor who can discern the particularities of its target and comprehend the different perspectives of stakeholders can identify the most suitable structure and guide investors through diligently drafted documentation into deals with calculated risk, in some instances even more calculated than in typical M&As. Thank you for your attention and our team at Your Legal Partners will be happy to further navigate you to the challenges that this evolving landscape presents.